This is a bit of an obscure example, but this is the sort of thing you can do with matrix rotations. So these are all essentially points that are defined in three-dimensional space, being projected onto a two-dimensional space, and right now we're just rotating about the z-axis where the z-axis is coming out of the screen towards the user. So today we're basically going to be looking at matrix math, specifically applying rotations to a vector or to a point in some three-dimensional space. So there's a point there. We're going to look at what happens if we try to rotate it about the origin. And we have three angles that we're rotating about. Rotation about the z is going to be by is going to be represented by psi. Rotation about the y-axis is going to be represented by theta. Rotation about the x-axis is going to be ro represented by phi. Uh, and we're just going to basically take a look at how to get the rotation matrix or the transformation matrix, which we can multiply by a vector representing this point to get the rotated state. So now we're looking straight down the x-axis with the x-axis coming out of the screen towards us. And we can see that this is simply a rotated frame with uh, this is simply a rotated representation of what we had before right here, only now x is coming out of the screen towards us. And here we have our point projected into the yz plane uh, such that its x coordinate is going to be exactly the same but its y in z its y and z coordinates are going to be exactly the same but its x coordinate is going to be zero such that it falls within this plane we're going to ignore that x coordinate when we're rotating about the x axis by angle phi and that's what we are going to be doing first here So I will apply angle phi, which is interestingly going to be this way, as opposed to the other direction, as one might expect. Here's angle phi, and this would be our new position. Uh, we can additionally label these. We will have uh, this as being vector v, and this as being the blue vector v prime. Now. One common mistake that people might make is they'll try to use x, y, and z coordinates directly. However, that is a bit more of a complicated method. So what we're going to do here is we're going to define the vector v by, by its vector length and its angle. And in this case, we're using a dummy angle alpha, uh, where alpha is just some angle, which we don't necessarily uh, have to use the variable alpha is just being used as a placeholder here and we'll see that alpha is later just factored out anyway. Now this should be the projection of V. So I'm going to call it VP to show that it is a projection into the YZ plane. So the projection of vector V, we're going to do this as a column vector, is going to be the length of the vector L multiplied by, uh, in the X direction here we can see that's going to be cosine of or, sorry, in the z direction, we can see that's going to be cosine of alpha. And in the y direction, we can see that's going to be sine of alpha. Such that we have our y coordinate being equal to length of the vector times sine of alpha. And we have our uh, z coordinate being equal to L times the cosine of alpha, where L is our length of our vector once again. So now we're applying a rotation, a modification to this. Instead of being at alpha, this is going to be at alpha, but now we have this angle phi, that's going to be alpha minus phi. Uh, and this, this direction is defined based on the right-hand rule because we had said that a rotation in this direction about the x-axis is going to be positive, as you can see here, going from y to z is a positive angle, so y to z is being defined as a positive phi in this instance. So we will define our new vector v prime as being equal to, once again we have this length of the vector, the length isn't going to change due to a rotation, and we are going to have, in this case, our sine of alpha but it's going to be minus phi, so sine alpha minus phi. And similarly, we're going to have z as being cos 
alpha minus phi. Uh, and when we expand this using our trigonometric identities, we're going to have, sorry, we're going to have L sine alpha cos phi minus cos alpha sine phi. And in the z direction, we are going to have, close bracket, uh, cos alpha cos phi plus sine alpha sine phi. And now we can simplify this. V prime, sorry, that's a vector. Never forget your vector symbols, otherwise you'll forget that it's a vector. Equals. Now we collect these like terms here. Oh, sorry. We have an L and we have sine alpha, cos alpha, cos alpha, sine alpha. We've defined our y and z coordinates of the original vector up here. So we're going to be using these to figure out what those. We're going to be using those to simplify our v prime into terms of x and y. So we get that v prime equals. We have L sine alpha, which is y, times cosine of phi, minus, in this case we have z times sine of phi, which gives us our new y coordinate. And we have cos alpha times L, which is again z, cos phi plus y sine phi. Now, in terms of getting our transformation matrix in this axis, in this coordinate system, we basically have to consider the fact that a transformation matrix, which is going to be rotating this, so I'll make it sub r, multiplied by our original vector v projected, is going to give us our v prime. So now we can kind of see based on matrix multiplication how this might come about. We have a y component. So we'll specify this as being an empty matrix for the time being. Multiplied by y and z. This thing. So we can kind of see for the first column we're going to have something times something which is going to give us y cos phi minus z sine phi. So we can kind of see here y has to be multiplied by cos phi and z has to be multiplied by sine phi but negative sine of phi since we're adding these negative and next we see our y, our y component for the second term has to be multiplied by sine of phi and our z component has to be multiplied by cos of phi, which basically gives us our transformation matrix in the x axis. So we know we now have to expand this to be three dimensional, but we know that our x coordinate was not changing due to a rotation about the x axis. So we can essentially extend this to include x, since we know that x is not going to change. Uh, we will have our transformation matrix multiplied by our coordinate components x, y, and z. These are just the positions of that vector. We know that x is going to be equal to x, so that can be a 1, 0, 0. We know that y and z do not have any component of x in it. And we know what these transformations are. Cos phi, negative sine phi, sine phi, and cos and this gives us our transformation matrix for rotations about the x-axis. Right, so now we're looking at rotations about the y-axis. So if we have an angle theta, an angle theta which rotates us to here, where we have again our original projected vector and we have our 
new vector after the rotation has been applied. So our projected vector is now in the xz plane. Uh, we're rotating it again by some arbitrary angle alpha and now we're adding a theta to that. So again, vp, we're going to define this in terms of its angles, l times. Uh, we're going to define our x component first, which is going to be l times uh, sine of alpha. And we have our z component, which is going to be cosine of alpha. And once again, after we apply our theta, V prime, alpha plus theta, cosine, alpha plus theta. So once again, we're going to apply our trigonometric identities. It's way too small. And we are going to simplify this down, uh, converting this into our x and z. So L sine theta is going to be x. And just as before, since this is not changing our y component, since we're rotating about the y-axis, uh, we can define our transformation matrix now. So in the y direction, our y component stays the same, and we have no component of the other uh, two positions in there. And our other axes do not have any y component. So now when we apply this, if we're thinking about multiplying this by a vector x, y, z, we can see that x cos theta, so cos theta here, and z sine theta, so sine theta, that's our third component there, and we also have negative sine theta, and cosine theta. And this is our rotation about the y-axis. And finally we have a rotation about the z-axis, so once again vector projection into the xy plane this time. When we rotate this, it's going to be rotated by angle psi to give us our new vector prime. Once again, we're going to define our vector projection. So now when we go to look at our new vector, v prime, And again, trigonometric identities and grouping like terms. And just like before, since our z component is not changing, when we extend this to our third dimension vector. No components of the other two in the z direction, and these two do not interact with the z components at all. So now for our x component. Once again, cos of phi, or psi, whatever you want to call it. Negative sine. So these are our three transformation matrices that can be applied in our Three dimension, to our three-dimensional vector. One major caveat of this method, however, and this is called the Euler method for those of you interested, one major caveat of this method is that while this method is conceptually simple, we have to consider the order in which we multiply xyz versus yzx versus zyx versus etc. And in addition to that, this method suffers from something called gimbal lock, which essentially means if we take one of these rotations and we apply them in a certain order,
then the innermost gimbal will be locked by the second one out and then you have a third one on the outside so it could get to the point where you have the outermost gimbal the inner more gimbal and then you have one inside of that which you cannot rotate it along this anymore uh, it becomes very difficult to use that and this very closely uh, mimics the Euler method for this rotation so essentially this method is perhaps the easiest to understand, which is why this is the simple video. However, it's a major caveat if you happen to experience gimbal lock, which won't necessarily happen in all cases, however, is certainly something to be concerned about. Some other methods that you might use are axis rotation, which is essentially if you take this vector and you say I want to go from this position down to this position and you rotate it about an axis. This method has no caveats, however it's very difficult to determine exactly which axis you want to use to make this rotation. The other method would be quaternion, which is essentially a complex method using complex variables, however is not going to be covered in this video. Yes, I am aware that the video is screwed up. This video has a lot of uh, random artifacts showing up. Uh, I got a new video card, still playing around with it, and I got to figure out the settings that don't cause that kind of stuttering when I record.